there, LEGO fans. For today's build, we have a blast from the past with the Ideas Line, bringing us to 100 Acre Woods, where we get to explore Winnie the Pooh. Kit number 21326, 1,265 pieces. And here we have a cute little cabin built into the base of a tree with several really desirable minifigures. And that all sounds fantastic. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting a closer look at all of this. So let's get unboxed, get it built, and we can have a closer look at Winnie the Pooh. As advertised and as anticipated, this kit is adorable. Not only do we have five cherished characters from my childhood that have been recreated into delightful set exclusive minifigures, but they also come with this cute little cabin, which has either been built into this tree or the tree grew around it. Either way, it looks fantastic and it can be opened up so you can explore the interior scene. Then of course the tree itself, which has a nice wide base, a bunch of gnarly branches, a pair of beehives, and some nice full foliage. Starting with the exterior, all the way in the back on the right hand side of the cabin, we find a roof covered in colorful shingles, a little chimney popping out of that, a few leaves that have fallen from the tree and come to rest, just meet that. We've got a nice little window with the shutters wide open and a little flower box, just meet that. Moving a little bit forward, we have a nice luscious green mound with the roots of a tree growing through it, a little bit of foliage popping out, and a pair of cute little mushrooms right in front of that. Moving a little over to the left, we find a cute little campfire, which is well situated in front of this great sitting log that is found right in front of the front door, above which it's written Mr. Sanders, which from my research, I'm not sure if it means that Mr. Sanders used to live here or if Winnie the Pooh's last name is Sanders. In the center, the door has a little knocker. Over on the left hand side, we have a little bell. And between the two, there's a little sign saying ring also, because it would seem that knocking or ringing alone would not be enough. Behind the sitting log, we've got two little pots of honey One's all sealed up, and the other one's been opened up, probably by Pooh, as he's been snacking away. Moving towards the back, on the other side of the house, we have another nice luscious mound, presumably also having a bunch of trues running through it, which at the base of it has this cute little snail. Nice little touch. Continuing along back, we find that this side of the cabin has much the same features as the other side, minus of course the one little chimney. And all the way in the back, we have one smaller window, in a matching style to the larger ones we find on the left and right, Again, having a window box, and beneath that, we also have a cute little ladybug. 
Now, moving up into the tree, we find our two little beehives, each having four little bees buzzing around the base, which are both nicely obscured and covered by some nice thick foliage. Making our way to the interior, we have a cozy little homestead, where it's quite clear that blue is the decorating color of choice. Starting over on the left, with the little storage zone up top, the first thing we find is a little heart-shaped stud. I'm not sure if this is referring to anything in particular, but it's a cute little addition. Just to the right of that, we have a box of poo sticks, in case anyone wants to race some sticks down the river. Below that, we've got the little fireplace, with chimney heads up to the roof, a little table, with a teacup, and another pot of open honey, which is situated next to a nice comfy armchair, which is just in front of some bee art on the wall, which is, of course, for poo, very appropriate. In the entryway, off on the left-hand side, we've got a little tea setup, and a map on the wall just behind that. And over on the other side, we've got a nice full-length mirror, and an umbrella stand, with one umbrella in it. Continuing to the right, we've got a table with a candle on it for some late night illumination. On the wall just behind that, a cuckoo clock, and then a comfy looking bed. And finally, for the storage on the top right, we have three more jars of honey, one of them having already been opened. And finally, we have two little accessories, a little poo storybook, and some signage directing us to the 100 acre wood, which at its base has yet another, or a fourth, open pot of honey. And now to the minifigures, where of course we have Winnie the Pooh, who's holding that red balloon that he used to get to the beehives, and wearing that red t-shirt that's honestly a little bit too small. I do find that Pooh's looking a little bit too skinny. Ideally, I think he should have come with a cover to go over the torso, to make him look a little bit plumper. Then we have my personal favorite, Tigger, looking great as a tiger, with his little satchel over one shoulder, and of course his tail. Now, I might be nitpicking a little bit, but in my ideal world, we would have had two tail options. One straight like this, and another curly one, capable of attaching to a stud, so it looks like he's bouncing on it. And then we have Rabbit, who's got his cute little cottontail on the back, and is carrying a carrot, because Rabbit prefers carrots to honey. Next up, we've got Piglet, looking very cute in his pink attire, with his pink skin, pink ears, pink snout, pink sweater, and a cozy red scarf. And last but not least, we've got Eeyore, who never looks that happy or excited, is sitting in his classic position, and has that cute little bow in his tail to help cheer him up. I would have liked it if they had also included a Christopher Robin minifigure. But I also understand why I didn't, because to make it to scale, he could not have been minifigure size. He would have to have been something buildable. And I don't feel that's what most LEGO collectors are looking for. So LEGO probably made the right choice here. Put all these features together, and as I said at the beginning of the video, we get one adorable little kit that I find displays really quite nicely. The tree looks pretty great, the cabin is definitely cute, and I have a feeling that these would fit in very nicely with my medieval blacksmith and treehouse kit, which I'm planning on merging together. Maybe I'll make this into a trio. The minifigures themselves are also pretty great for display, either on their own in a display case, or set them up in a scene. Either way, cherished characters like this are sure to get some attention. As to the playability of this kit, I don't find it actually scores that high. I mean, all LEGO is fun to play with. There's definitely a lot of fun to be had here if you so choose. But on the scale of playable kits, I find this one is at the lower end of the scale. And that's just fine, because there's still a lot of appeal to this kit. And as to the parts, as with most any LEGO kit, there's a lot of great elements to reuse here. But I find there's three pieces that are worthy of a little extra attention. First, we've got the two beehives. I haven't seen those before. There's eight transparent studs with bees printed on them, which I find to be very cute. And of course, four honey pots. I'm pretty sure these are set exclusives. I really like them. And even if you didn't want to take the set apart, there's four of them in here. So you could still take one, two, or maybe even three for some other purposes and still have some in this kit. So that's pretty great. For my final thoughts, I think this kit is best suited for the A-Falls out there. I'm not saying a Junior LEGO fan can't enjoy it. I mean, they can certainly build it and have fun with it like they can with pretty much any kit. But I don't think the typical Junior LEGO fan has had the same exposure to Pooh and his friends as the A-Falls out there. So I just don't feel that they'll have the same level of sentimental attachment to this kit as, for example, I have. And that's just fine, because LEGO doesn't discriminate. They have a very wide catalog. Something for every age, every sex, every nationality. So if this kit doesn't speak to you, which personally I would find a little surprising, there's definitely going to be something else out there for you.